What's cracking y'all? Cheap bastard talking to ya. Today's video is going to be really special because a CPU with a 1k price tag about a decade ago got into my hands recently. So what's the best thing to do with it? I mean, really, it's not a question actually. Let's benchmark that sh** and make a video about it. Smash like if you agree. Ok ok guys, let's just chill for a second and talk about the test system. To test my beast i7-980X Extreme CPU, I paired it with 16 gigs of DDR3 RAM, AMD Vega 56 Founders Edition and drum roll please, a stock Intel cooler designed for older 4 core i7s. Let's heat the oven and start testing. Since this PC that they have, spoiler alert as you will see in the tests, is capable of more than 1080p, I also included 4K benchmarks. First but not last, we have GTA 5. The MSI trivia didn't work on it, so we couldn't get any real benchmark numbers. Don't worry, we got like 60 plus FPS on both 4K and 1080p. Next please! Our next game is Overwatch. On ultra settings 4K we got an average of 86.9, a minimum of 59.3 and the maximum of 109.2 FPS. While the GPU is sweating on 100%, the CPU is almost sleeping with around 30% of usage. Let's move to 1080p. On ultra settings we got an average of 90 FPS, a minimum of 66.7 and a maximum of 113.2 FPS. Same story here, CPU is sleeping with around 30% of usage. The next game I tested is Plants vs Zombies Garden Warfare 2. On 1080p maximum settings we got an average of 143.8, a minimum of 119.7 and a maximum of 180.4 FPS. CPU usage was hovering around 40-50% to and GPU was around 75. Diving into 4K gave us an average frame rate of 62 FPS while the minimum was 45.5 and the maximum was 73.9 FPS. The resolution switch meant that the CPU could chill again and work around 30% of its potential, while the GPU was working 100% all the time. GTA 5 time! Oh wait, not this one. On Epic Gamer Water settings we got an average of 102.8 FPS, a minimum of 47.5 and a maximum of 132.1 FPS. The CPU once again stood against Vega 56 very well. When I switched the resolution to 4K, the CPU was so bored that he went to play solitaire with itself. It was working around 20-30% to of its full capabilities and the GPU was fully loaded once again. We got an average of 34.3, a minimum of 20.6 and a maximum of 43 FPS. Still better than playing GTA 5 on Xbox 360. Coming up next is CSGO. We got pretty good and similar frame rates on 1080p and 4K and they were super close so I won't bother going into them deep cause CSGO can't handle more than 4 cores. Neither the GPU or the CPU fully got to express themselves. Anyways, the gaming experience was super flawless. Now for the last game today, I've got you some Need for Speed Payback. Feeling those Fast and Furious 2 vibes and rocking that sweet 1080p Ultra, we got an average of 59.7, a minimum of 44.5 and a maximum of 95.8 FPS. The GPU and the CPU were both around 70% of usage, so I can't really tell who bottlenecked 
but since I hopped into that sweet yellow EVO and switched the resolution to 4K, our poor Vega 56 got wrecked by Need for Speed's textures and the frame rate dropped to around 30 FPS with a minimum of 26 FPS and a maximum of 35.7 FPS. In conclusion, the CPU is a beast, even by today's standards. Even Vega 56 couldn't hold it back. If you have LGA1366 motherboard, you don't need to change it anytime soon because this CPU is more than you need for gaming and even editing today. If you get a really good deal on this CPU, buy it without hesitating because it's lit AF. And remember, I was running it stock. It could easily overclock to 4 GHz with my cooler and it would reach something like 4.5 GHz with water. Ok guys, don't forget to subscribe and DM me some memes. See you later. Cheap Bastard out.